You ever wonder what's inside a motor, but you just don't want to cut it apart? Well, I've cut apart a lot of motors in my day, and today I'm going to show you a few of these cut apart motors that I have made. So maybe I should ask, how many motors have you taken apart or cut apart in your day? I've actually taken a lot of motors to the bandsaw for one reason or another, whether it is finding out how it's constructed when it is all glued together, or uh, maybe mostly just finding out how it's constructed <laughs> when it's all glued together. Usually that's why I take it to a bandsaw. Uh, but sometimes I make a little more fun. These are more display models, and I made these last week for one of my employees. He's shooting a video. You'll probably see it soon, and I really don't want to give up the surprise on it, but it's, it's a great video. And so, so I made these actually on the CNC machine. And just to refresh your memory on the internals of a motor, in particular, uh, let's start with the brush motor. It has the rotor, which we typically will call the armature. This one's a little weird. It's, yeah, I, I ruined this one. Uh, so the shaft is pressed out on the wrong side. But, you know, it spins, the rotor spins, it's got the commutator. This one also has a little impeller fan built into it. Our nicer ones don't, our less expensive ones do. And then this would be an assembled motor without the hoods put on one side. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see on the overhead there, it's spinning. But the commutator spins on the inside with the rotor. And then here for, this is a brushless stator. The brushless stator would be on the inside. And we don't have that on the inside of that brushless stator. Nor do we have the magnets on the inside of this. And typically I would want something to be fully functional when it is a display but uh it is just a lot easier when you're you're cutting through a can hitting ceramic magnets with a normal end mill is a really bad idea it's going to break the end mill most likely you, you really can't just cut ceramic it needs to be ground away and you can't cut aluminum and grind ceramic in the same operation so it made it a little difficult and the same goes for the stator laminations you really don't want to be cutting these with a typical end mill. It'll do it, but it's really, really, really hard on the end mill. These have uh, silicon or sil silicone, silicon in them, and uh, cutting essentially glass is not a good idea with a typical end mill. It, it's going to dull it immediately. So I took the stator out of this and I took the magnets out of this. Well, this one was actually an empty can that I fortunately had found. So they're incomplete motors, but. We still have everything installed on the end of the brush motor. You can see here, here is our under hood, the, the normal brush channel portion of the hood, the brush and the spring that would slide into the assembly. You can see, like I said, this side is assembled and this side is not assembled, but that would all assemble into there on a typical rebuildable brush motor. And the way that we have this cut, you can actually see into the cannon. You can see the rotor spinning. And again, sans magnets, but uh, you know, all the, the filings, these are going to be steel shavings coming out of this cam when I'm cutting, and that would have embedded all over the magnets. It would have been a, just a terrible, terrible mess. And honestly, it probably wouldn't have looked as cool either. So cut that sucker open. I, I really should have gotten some, some uh, video of me doing this on the CNC machine, but it, it did take a long time just because I wanted it to look good. And the first full width pass, you kind of got to go slow. So yeah, uh, that uh, kind of is what it is on that. But as you can see on this one, I actually screwed it up. The, the center point, my origin for my CNC program was you know in the middle of the can here, but the first one that I generated, it, it actually wasn't in the middle. It was just a mistake of mine. Uh, so I had to redraw it. And I actually did draw this in 3D first to get the exact size of the slot that we wanted. And then I exported the cam and then put that into the CNC machine like you normally would. And this one, I could tell immediately what I had done. And so I just stopped it. I flipped it over and then restarted it. I actually did have to regenerate my code, the, the G code, to cut it properly to be able to line it up because otherwise it was gonna, it, it was gonna cut a big old oval over here and that was not gonna be any good. It wasn't gonna work. Same thing for this. I took it all apart. I actually had to use a heat and an arbor press to get the stator out of this can because it was a fully assembled, although broken motor when I got the parts to do this. And I made the cutout larger, mostly because I could, and I thought it would look really neat. You can see on this one, this is an older design. It's got the sensor pickups on the backside. So just kind of a neat display piece to show people, hey, you know, the rotor spins inside. It spins with three phase. <laughs> Y'all are gonna get the joke soon enough. 
<laughs> oh man, I want to ruin this one so bad and I'm not. I'm not going to do it. So yeah, I just wanted to share these. Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you have any ideas for producing a really cool looking display model. I really, I, for some reason, I really like doing these. It's like when you go to a trade fair or something and they've got the part kind of cut apart. Um, what I would really like to do is use like red markup dye on the cut edges of this so it really makes it pop as, you know, you know, like blood or something like that. So, yep, there we go. Some motors, some parts, and just a little bit of fun at the shop making some display units. So, as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.